One of the most frustrating things that can happen in your cybersecurity career is to put a bunch of work improving your knowledge and skills only to keep getting your job applications rejected by employers. I've absolutely been in that situation and let's be honest, it's not fun. You might even describe the situation in a less family friendly way, but nobody wants to put in a bunch of work and keep getting rejected. In this video, I'm gonna give you some criteria to evaluate the situation and some different things that you can do to improve your chances of getting more interviews. Keep in mind that this is based on not just my experience, but also people who I've coached and speaking to others from around the industry, including hiring managers that keep rejecting you. Okay, let's do this. So if we've never had a coaching session together, or if you're new to my content, one thing to keep in mind about me is that I focus on the facts and I use data to support my strategies and advice. I see absolutely no point in fantasizing about potential reasons for something, and instead, I try something, I get data from those results, and I use that to shape what happens next. I'm a strong believer that you should be doing this too, because the data won't lie to you, and it's going to help you make better decisions just like with any other aspect in your life. Specifically in this video, we're gonna talk about callback rates for interviews. So what do I mean by callback rate? Well, what I mean is if you apply to a job, how often are you getting called back? Clearly you want a high callback rate because that means you're getting more opportunities to interview for whatever types of positions that you're applying to. And even if some aren't working out, you've at least gotten past one of the major hurdles where people get stuck, which is actually getting to the interview. All right, so the first callback rate and the lowest one that we're gonna cover is the 25% callback rate. So again, just to remind you, this means that if you apply to 100 jobs, you're getting called back 25 times or less on average. I probably wouldn't say that this is the same as getting callbacks for one in four applications, because if you fall into this category, you most likely need more applications to actually hit that number. Whenever I see the 25% callback rate, it basically means that you have quite a bit of work to do. The first thing that you need to do in this tier is to work on your resume because it's clearly not working. Don't be one of those people who's convinced that their resume is solid because if it was, then you would have a lot higher callback rate based on that alone. Have somebody who knows what they're doing review and critique your resume. If you go to cybertrainingpro.com, we can absolutely help you out with that. One of the things that I highly recommend is to book a career coaching session or a resume review service. That way you can get your resume checked out. At the absolute minimum, you should be watching the video on my YouTube channel on resumes where I actually walk through my resume and tell you what you should have in general. The second thing that needs to happen is you need to build your credentials. I certainly think there's specific certifications that you need to pursue and I list those in my free ebook on my website's Getting Started page, but in general, you need to start finding projects, certifications, or ways to make contributions to the cybersecurity community that you can add to your resume. All these things make you a more competitive candidate when you're applying for jobs. The third thing that you should do is try to actually get work experience if you have none, or at least related experience if you're already working. One of the quickest ways to build credibility is start working in the tech field or in a related area. For newbies, I recommend applying to all entry-level IT and cybersecurity jobs that list experience requirements of up to two or three years of experience. If you're already in the tech field, then I would try to find a job that has cybersecurity responsibilities so that you can actually start making the shift. Fourth, you should start networking with professionals either through platforms like LinkedIn or going to meetups where you can actually start to get introduced with working professionals. Are you tired of overpaying for cybersecurity training? Are you interested in training from industry professionals? Are you looking for cybersecurity career services? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then CyberTrainingPro.com is the perfect platform for you. At CyberTrainingPro, we're a one-stop shop for all your cybersecurity needs. We can train you for industry certifications or just improve your overall knowledge and skills in a certain area. Unlike other platforms, we don't stop there. We can also coach you throughout your career, practice your interview skills, or create a high-performing resume with our career services. CyberTrainingPro.com isn't just another training platform. Students get exclusive access to our private community where we go beyond training courses to provide additional content, tips and tricks, and engagement with both other students and staff. Look. By the year 2025, there could be as many as 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity. With so much opportunity, why not maximize your career potential with a platform that cares about your success? Come join us at cybertrainingpro.com and start building your future today. The next tier we're gonna talk about is the 50% callback rate. In all honesty, this next tier, a 50% callback rate is pretty solid. Here, you're doing most of the things well enough to get calls frequently, so something has to be working, right? Whenever I see somebody at this interview callback rate, typically one or two of the things from the 25% callback rate are getting done. Most commonly, it's getting certifications, completing projects, or gaining work experience, 
possibly match with having improved the resume. You certainly could be fine with this callback rate because you're probably still going to be able to land a good job, but this video is to help you get better, so let's improve. The first thing to do is start doing all the items I previously mentioned, make your resume shine, build your credentials, and gain experience. Next, you wanna start building your personal brand and keep networking. We previously talked about networking with other professionals, which is absolutely beneficial, and when you have a strong profile, getting around a 50% callback rate, the value of those relationships greatly increases. With personal branding like a website or a strong LinkedIn presence, you can really start to identify yourself professionally to stand out from the crowd. Simply put, create posts, comment on other people's posts, and add value. All right, 75% is the next callback rate. If you're above a 75% callback rate, you're on fire. Honestly, I would be careful with any kind of changes to your resume or what you're doing because it's gonna be hard to get much higher. I would, however, keep continuing to develop all the items that I previously mentioned because with a high callback rate of 75% or more, you're an established professional, so now you should be continuing to develop your personal brand and expand on everything that you've done before. This high callback rate means that you're in high demand and we don't wanna lose that momentum by becoming complacent. Also at this point, we wanna make sure that we're getting calls for interviews from basically any job that we want, which means we're shifting from more of a quantity standpoint to a quality standpoint. That means think about what kind of job you want, what kind of company you wanna work for, and the situation that you wanna be in and really focus in on that criteria. I'm gonna be completely honest, a 75% or greater callback rate is going to be fairly difficult for a newer professional, but it's certainly attainable for seasoned professionals. Question of the day, if you're searching for a job right now, which callback tier do you belong to? If you're not searching for a job right now, which tier do you belong to the last time you're searching for a job? Let me know down in the comment section below. Callback rates are extremely important in your career because they're based on whatever you submit for job applications and they have nothing to do with how you actually perform in an interview. Your chances of being able to land a job increase significantly the more frequently you get calls for interviews. Now, don't forget that you still have to work on your interviewing skills, but if you compare this to the lottery, basically the more tickets or interviews that you have, the greater chance that you're gonna win. That's because you're gonna keep getting more and more practice and eventually things are gonna work out. It's just that simple. I strongly recommend using the information in this video to help guide you towards success. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.